So our first topic for this week is fitting a curve. So say we've performed a chemistry experiment where we've performed a reaction multiple times at different temperatures and we've measured the time it takes for the reaction to be completed. So we'd plot temperature against time. And we would plot our data points. So what we find is that as we increase the temperature, the time it takes to uh, for the reaction to complete gets smaller. So this is what this line shows. Now, as you can see, this relationship in this case is very linear. So we might want to plot a line that fits our data as best as we can. So now that we have this line, we can say that at points that we haven't performed the experiment, we can still approximate what the time to completion would be just from this line that we created. However, one thing that we will need is an equation for this line. So for a straight line, we can say that the values of y equals mx plus c, where m is the slope of the line and c is where it cuts through the y-axis. However, not all the time will our data be in a straight line. Sometimes they will better follow the path of a parabola, for example. So that's when we get into different order polynomials. So for order one polynomial, it's our straight line, which we've seen before. Once again, the equation is y equals mx plus c. Where m is the slope, and C is where it cuts through the y-axis. Our second order line is a parabola. So excuse my poor drawing, but it's supposed to be a parabola. So the equation for a parabola is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this, this equation describes the curve of parabola. So our third order line is a polynomial that looks like this. And in this case, the equation for this line is y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So the values a, b, c, d, and m are just coefficients for these uh, equations. So you may have noticed that uh, the order corresponds to the highest power of x that is in one of these equations. So in our first case, x is to the power of 1, and it's order 1. In our second case, the highest power of x is 2, and it's order 2. And in the third case, highest power of x is 3, so it's order 3. And this continues onwards. So now in MATLAB, we will be looking at a set of data that is stored in two vectors, x and y. Now, if we plot these vectors against each other as red dots, we can see where our data points are. As you can see, they once again form somewhat of a straight line, a little bit off here and there. Now, we could fit a straight line to these data points by using the inbuilt functions in MATLAB polyfit and polyval. Given a set of data points, polyfit will fit a line of best fit to your data and it will give you the coefficient matrix that makes up that line. So if we use polyfit in MATLAB, the function returns a vector of the coefficients and to the function itself we give it the x data, the y data and what order line we want to plot. So running this will give us the coefficients for a straight line which describes this data. So now the other function that we have is polyval. However the first thing that we will need is another vector for x which will allow us to draw the straight line. To create this I just use linspace 
between the values of 0 and 10 and give it 100 points. Now to get our y value, I use the polyval function and I give it both the coefficient matrix, which I've called C, and our new x points. So now we can plot these values, these new x1 and y1 values, and they will give us our line of best fit, as we can see here. Now you'll notice that not all the points are on the line, but it's a pretty good representation of the data that we have. Now, once again, we've got a new set of data, once again stored in x and y vectors. So I'll plot these in the same way that I did before with red dots. And they make up somewhat of an upside down parabola. Now, following the same process that I did before, so I will generate a new coefficient matrix, this time using a straight right line approximation, getting a new x vector to plot with. using polyval to generate the values of y. And plotting these values. And this time you can see that the line that we generated, uh, it doesn't fit the data very well. It um, is very far away from most of the points. So, following the same process, we'll give it a second order line. So it's the same polyfit function, given the x and y, the original x and y data, and this time making the order two. That's our coefficient matrix. Now we don't have to regenerate our x1 vector, we can just regenerate our y1 vector using polyval and the new coefficient matrix. So if we plot this line, we've got an upside down parabola, which very accurately follows the data. Now some people will probably be wondering why we don't just keep increasing the order of the line so we get something much, much, much more accurate. Well, it doesn't quite work that way. And I will demonstrate how a, if we just give it far too many order, that it will just give us um, a line that might fit all the points perfectly, but won't be exactly what we wanted. So in this case, I will be using an order of 15. And these are the coefficients for the polynomial that we will generate. So once again, creating the new line, or the new vector to create the new line, using polyval, the coefficients, and the x values. Now if I plot these new values onto the same plot, we will see that we have a line that goes through every single point. And we can see behind it that our lines that we drew before are still there. However, between the last few points, the, to fit all the points accurately, the polynomial has to go far outside the bounds of what we'd normally be seeing just to get there. So in general, we use the minimum order that we can to generate a line that fits the data.